All right, it's been a little while since we've had an update on Project GTR, but we're finally getting around to work on it. Previously, uh, we worked on the suspension and brakes of this car to get the uh, handling and stopping up to world-class standards. Uh, so now it's time to get some stuff done with the engine. One of the cool things about the GTR is you can max out the capability of the engine and the transmission uh, just with bolt-ons. So we're going to be doing a full set of bolt-ons here. Uh, we're going to be aiming for around 650 horsepower and we're going to artificially keep the torque load to reduce stress on the bottom end and the transmission. So let's take a look at what we've done so far. So everybody knows GTRs run hot and they end up going into limp mode on the track, sometimes in as little as a few laps. So one of the first things we address with our car is cooling. One of the first things you can see here since it's right out front is this big uh, Grady intercooler. This is a Grady uh, R-Core intercooler. It's a tube and fin and it has internal turbulators inside the uh, tubes to help cooling. Uh, for cars that are driven on the track, we really like tube and fin because they're a lot lighter. Uh, the core allows air to flow through it better to get to the other heat exchangers like the radiator. And um, as long as they have a constant flow of air, they cool really well. Uh, the R-Type Grady core with the turbulators is one of the most effective tube and fin intercoolers on the market. And we actually use R-Type cores from Grady and a lot of times when we build custom stuff. So uh, really cool intercooler. It, it uses cross flow instead of top to bottom. So you have a lot more of the um, surface of the intercooler being exposed to the air. So you should get a lot lower surface temp. The intercooler is thicker and more passages, so the pressure drop across the intercooler should be less. Better cooling, less pressure drop, more power. Now you can't see behind it, but we have a CSF radiator. Um, CSF radiator with uh, fabricated end tanks. This radiator is a lot stronger. We can run it at higher pressure without worrying about blowing out the uh, end tank seals. So we're running a higher pressure cap. That raises the boiling point of the coolant and helps cooling. Um, it's an all aluminum radiator. It, it has about 50% more capacity than stock. It's gonna keep our coolant temps a lot lower. This is kind of important because some of the uh, primary cooling for the GTR's transmission is done through the coolant system and uh, that puts extra heat into the system. Uh, the transmission is the first part on the GTR that goes tilt with the heat and causes a lot of your um, going into limp mode incidents. Uh, the factory cooler is an oil to water cooler that's mounted on the back and that takes a lot of the heat out of the transmission fluid, puts it into the engine coolant. So that cools it but there's only a limit to how much it can cool it because it can't drop it below whatever the coolant temperature is. Plus with all the heat going into the engine coolant, that contributes to overheating too. So what we've done is we've added a Grady auxiliary cooler. Now this is a uh, air to oil cooler. You know, you, you can see it's a pretty substantially sized one and it's right up front. Uh, the Grady kit has hard lines that go all the way to the back and it has like a duct that uses the uh, un unused front scoop in the, on the left side of the GTR. So in addition to the factory cooler, we have this cooler. It makes a huge difference and just about eliminates any of that limp mode caused by transmission overheating. Uh, the Grady cooler also has this fabricated washer tank that takes the place of the plastic deal. That way you have total unobstructed uh, flow going to your cooler from the duct. For our transmission cooler, the uh, transmission fluids trip to the front starts right here. Uh, this is the factory water to oil cooler, which uh, cools the fluid and um, puts all the heat to the radiator and that cooling system. Well, on the stock car, it's just this thing, and this thing does all the cooling for the transmission, which isn't enough for track driving. 
So Grady makes this cool billet adapter that remote mounts the cooler and also has the takeoff lines for the air to oil cooler in the front of the car. It's nice and clean. Uh, you get the stock amount of cooling and you get the additional cooling up front. So you're probably quadrupling the amount of cooling available to the transmission. Uh, the Grady kit has really nicely fabricated hard lines with brackets, the bolts on super clean, looks like a factory part. So our other upgrade is for the engine oil cooling and we use a Cicero engine oil cooler. Now we looked at all the other coolers on the market that replace the stock cooler in the stock position and this is the biggest cooler with the thickest core on the market. So this should keep our engine oil temps a lot lower. So with cooling handle, let's go look at some of the stuff we did for power. So the first thing we wanted to do is to uncork the engine and improve the breathing. Uh, there was also an opportunity to get rid of a lot of weight because the stock GTR exhaust is really heavy. So what we did is we went to a Grady titanium exhaust. Um, uses really big 94 millimeter tubes, so it's going to be enough exhaust for all the horsepower things we might do in the future and it's really, really light. Uh, the exhaust and the downpipes and everything save 50 pounds over the stock stuff, and 50 pounds is a lot, especially on a late model car, so it's pretty legit. Uh, some of the stuff you can see, it's like really awesome TIG welding. It has all the JDM craftsmanship with little pie cuts and all that. Um, it has like V-band clamps, and this thing fits super awesome. So. This is one of the cleanest off-the-shelf exhausts I've ever seen, actually. Um, when we go up to the front, we have some Grady downpipes. Uh, these things go from the turbo to the uh, Y-pipe. Um, what's cool about these is they have like a nice bell mouth, so the wastegate discharge and the uh, turbine exducer goes into a nice smooth funnel shape deal that uh, doesn't have much turbulence to minimize back pressure. Uh, these things are fabricated out of 304 stainless and like the rest of Grady's products has really nice fabrication and it's beautiful. Uh, you can't really see it but believe me it looks pretty awesome up there. It's all polished, really nice TIG welds. Um, this ought to actually be good for quite a bit of power and quite a bit of turbo response. The next thing we did is we went to a Cobb Tuning Carbon Fiber Big Tube Intake. And one of the problems about the GTR is when you start turning up the boots and uncorking things for more flow, you max out the mass airflow meter. So the most it can read is five volts. And when you just start making um, some really basic bolt-on power, you're maxing out your airflow meter at five volts. So what Cobb's done is they've actually made the tube that the airflow meter sensing element sits in bigger so uh, it takes more airflow to reach five volt volts and with the access port tuner they recalibrate the airflow compensation table in the ECU so it works good at low flow too. Now the Cobb intake right here is their big tube intake with the big airflow meter uh, sensing area it has like some open element filters and uh, it's big diameter all the way back to the turbos. And uh, on GTRs, that is actually a restriction that's probably good for about 40 horsepower. So once you start increasing the boost pressure, so it legitimately uncorks the engine. Uh, it also gives you more headspace for the airflow meter. And it's bitchin' made out of carbon fiber. The tubes are carbon fiber and the filter caps are carbon. Uh, unlike a lot of um, other intake tubes, it actually has a bracket that connects it solidly to the core support so it just doesn't flop around and rattle. Uh, I have some buddies that have GTRs with uh, other intakes and they're kind of fussy about squeaks and rattles and they say that the uh, intake tube rattles around against the core support and it bugs them. Well, the Cobb's not going to do that. Um, the uh, rest of our intake track has a Grady hard pipe kit. Now, hard pipes are actually good for some power. I know people have a hard time wrapping their head around that, but 
It's a rigid metal pipe. It doesn't expand and contract like plastic, and you don't have to inflate an expanding plastic and rubber intake track. So actually, your compressor on your turbo has to work a little bit less hard, and you have a little bit less back pressure. So it's kind of weird. Like I've done like a lot of testing, and every time I've gone to a, a hard pipe setup on a, a turbo car, I've always seen you know, an increase of power. Like it's usually like about five, but I've seen as much as 12 horsepower just by going to hard pipes. Um, now the uh, hard pipe has uh, Greddy's blow-off valve here. Uh, it's really clean. It's uh, set up recirculating just like OEM, so you don't uh, screw up your air-fuel air ratio when the valve's open. Um, there's more diaphragm area than stock and a stiffer spring, so these aren't going to blow open with high boost like the stock ones do. And also you have more diaphragm area for more control, so they're more sensitive. Um, so when you lift the throttle, they open easier and the bigger valves. So when you lift the throttle, they let more air flow so you don't um, have your backup of uh, compressed air in front of the throttle body and your turbo doesn't slow down as much. So it, it improves response and reduces lag that way. So to improve the ignition system, we have Ignition Project Multi-Spark Coils. Now these coils have more energy and a stronger spark, but they also fire the spark multiple times. So your factory coil only fires at once. You have one chance to ignite the mixture in the cylinder. The Ignition Project's coils not only have more spark energy than the factory ones, but they also spark multiple times, about 10 times every um, ignition cycle. So with your factory coil, you only have one, one chance to ignite the fuel-air mixture, more chances for a misfire, these will restrike the spark 10 times, so it's almost impossible to miss fire. Um, it's, it's also really clean and easy. It just bolts right on and replaces your stock coil pack. Um, I've had a lot of success running these in all kinds of uh, time attack cars and drift cars, and uh, it's one of the best things you can do to upgrade your ignition for the money. One of the things about the GTR is the stock injectors run out of capacity really fast. Uh, with just super basic bolt-ons, you max out the injectors, so we needed more capacity. So uh, Cobb Tuning sells Injector Dynamics 1300cc injectors, uh, and they're all calibrated to work with their axis port and, and shelf tunes. So we ran the those injectors versus other things because the ability to run the shelf tune from Cobb saves a lot of money and aggravation. So turbo motors when driven on the track often have a problem with like a lot of blow-by. So the blow-by sticks like oily combustion gas and dumps in your intake track. Uh, this could do a couple of things like um, it could clog up your intercooler, uh, the oil can get all over everything. It can ruin your sensors, ruin your catalytic converter. And also when you have oil mist in your intake air, it can contribute to detonation, which can even cause your engine to get destroyed. So to prevent that, uh, we have Radium's catch can system. So we have one catch can for every vent in the engine. So there's three. There's two of them up front, one in the back. Um, this has an air oil separator. Um, it's actually a really big one, so it should really take the oil mist out of the blow-by air. Um, they also have a uh, cool dipstick here, so you can easily check the oil, level the oil on the catch cans and uh, make sure that they're empty. And it also has a cool feature with the drain. Uh, there's a drain hose on the bottom that's underneath the car, so we could just turn one pet cock and drain all three catch cans really easily. So one of the things that's going to give us a lot of power and reliability is the ability to run ethanol as a fuel. So we plan to run pump E85, which is going to add a lot of safety margin in what we do. E85 has way higher octane than pump gas, and it also runs a lot cooler. Um, so to accommodate that, uh, we have a flex fuel sensor that's behind the uh, fuel rail over there. It's really hard to see. Um, and we also have a fuel pressure sensor. 
So you can use the access port to use the data from the ethanol content sensor and the fuel pressure sensor to make on-the-fly adjustments to the fuel and spark maps to make the most of ethanol. Uh, the fuel pressure sensor also adds a level of safety. If your fuel pressure starts dropping off, the, the ECU can be programmed to revert to a lower boost pressure to save your motor. One of the cool ways that um, Cobb has integrated some extra sensors into the system is with this CAN hub. In the past, what other people have done is they've just unplugged things like your EGR, your charcoal canister purge, or your cruise control, and used those inputs uh, to add additional sensors into the ECU. Well, that works, but one of the bad things is, guess what? You don't have charcoal canister purge, you don't have EGR, you don't have cruise control anymore. So what Cobb's done, uh, done is come up with this really cool CAN hub. Now, uh, CAN is like multiplexing, so a single wire can carry signals for a lot of different sensors. And what this is, is a uh, CAN pass-through. So the CAN hub goes into the charcoal canister purge solenoid line, but the solenoid still works. But the CAN hub allows the flex fuel sensor and the fuel pressure sensor data to be introduced into the CAN stream via that input. So everything still works and it's just an extra uh, port where you can add additional sensor inputs for the ECU to read. Really cool, really clean, innovative product. Um, you know, I wish Cobb actually made something with a few more inputs so we could use a few more um, things into the ECU. The final thing we had to improve is the uh, fuel pump. Now the factory Nissan pump runs out of capacity really quick, so I mean, you just add an exhaust and just a simple tune and you're already at the max capacity of the fuel pump. So anything more than that, including running ethanol, you have to drastically improve the pump capacity. Um, it's hard to see here, but uh, we ran a, we're running a radium fuel system. The radium kit has a whole hanger and, and its own sump and the ability to run up to three fuel pumps. Now we're, we're running two and uh, you know, we're only planning to run about a thousand horsepower on this in, in its final form uh, once we build the engine and transmission. So we're running one AM 340 liter per hour pump, and then we're running a Walboro brushless pump that uh, pumps probably about 500 liters per hour. The brushless pump runs cooler and uses less power and it has way more capacity. So those are mounted out on the back and they're already installed, so it's hard to see. Uh, the other thing is we ran a radium relay kit and what this does is it enables you to run uh, two heavy gauge wires. You can see that right here directly to the battery. And uh, you, it goes back and there's relays back there. The stock pump inputs from the ECU switch the relays on and off and uh, enable you to draw full power straight from the battery. So that way your pumps have full power all the time. Like without this, if you have like a really serious pump, uh, the resistance of the stock wire harness is probably too much and you can see your voltage at the pump fall to below 12 volts sometimes when they're running full tilt. But with these heavy gauge wires, I mean, you're seeing, you know, full 13 volts plus all the time. So your pumps are happy and working at their design max rated load. Um, so that pretty much wraps up what we've done for bolt-on engine stuff. Um, like I said, this is going to get us to about 650 horsepower and um, it'll keep us happy for a little while and then we're eventually going to build the engine and transmission and we're going to take it to about a thousand. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you want us to build your GTR, Go to MotoIQ.com, click on the Garage Services link, fill out the form, and we'll begin back to you. Thank you, and talk to you later.